Hello everyone, on the next part and pathology section is covering the diverticulosis or diverticular disease or diverticulitis. And I started by those three words because it's very important to differentiate between what is called by diverticulosis and diverticular disease and finally diverticulitis and also um, maybe a diverticular abscess or diverticular perforation and a fistula as well All right and this what I like to call by the um, just bring this down a little bit and this is what I would like to call by the disease spectrum of diverticulosis so diverticulosis is when you have a patient who's coming to you for routine colonoscopy and you find that they have lots of diverticular which is outpouching of the mucosa of the bowel which is very common in the recto sigmoid region but you ask your patient about any of the symptoms and they deny it you don't have any sort of symptoms uh, that's bothering them at all and this is called diverticulosis so it's asymptomatic, that's the key word, outpouching of the um, uh, mucosa, musculosa of the wall of the bowel, specifically in the rectus region. Diverticular disease is when they come to you with a pain in the left inferior quadrant, and this pain is specifically after eating, and you examine them, there is some sort of tenderness, and also the... Um, um, they, they are known to have chronic constipation or chronic straining as well and particularly happen in older age who eat high fat diet or maybe a low fiber diet so this is diverticular disease but we did not mention any fever in here so there is no fever and also there is no sort of increased inflammatory markers so that takes us to the next step. So if you have a patient with the same symptoms, coming and well, with fever and increased inflammatory markers, it could be diverticulitis, which is an infection or inflammation of the diverticular the divertic, um, the that they had in this area. Moving forward, this diverticular in the wall might perforate and become very weak. So this is diverticular perforation, and they will come with peritonitis or significant abdominal pain in this area. Diverticular abscess, it might pass without any surgical intervention, but they will have fecal correction around the, um, the colon and lead to formation of an abscess. The inflammation might start to even erode the surrounding structure or might lead to a fistula. In the near female, it could be colovaginal fistula or colovazical fistula in a male to the urinary bladder. So looking here, these are diverticular, which is outpouching of the whole mucosa, and uh, the, so this is basically the diverticular or the di um, the diverticulosis. All right. However, if you have any sort of uh, fecal impaction in this area, this might get inflamed, which is exactly like an appendicitis. So the patient will have a diverticulitis. So now it's inflamed, like appendicitis. The same thing but it might even become so if you look here this is diverticulitis because it's inflamed it might even become um, a per very weak in the wall and lead to diverticular perforation so it's very important to try to differentiate between these terms which is a diverticular disease a diverticulitis and a diverticulosis and all these kind of things all right well so what would you do when you have a patient with pain in the left inferior quadrant and complaining uh, or you had chronic constipation and so on? So we initially need to do our initial assessment. And our initial assessment really depends on the patient presentation, whether they are coming with uh, some sort of diverticular disease or they're coming very unwell or unwell enough that it might be diverticulitis or diverticular uh, perforation, or diverticular abscess, or even a fistula. So we need to do the initial assessment, 
we need to do a history from our patient and obviously do examination and we'll probably need to do we'll need to do to take bloods from them and these bloods most importantly the inflammatory markers deal with it as if it's an appendicitis inflammatory markers uh, including white blood cells and crp and all the other routine bloods and including group and screen as they might go to surgery if it's perforated or we have an abscess or we have a fistula moving forward as well and after the bloods ct scan uh, with contrast could be very important to diagnose the diverticular and also rule out cancer however you can do an ultrasound if you're suspecting any collection or pelvic collection if ct scan is not available you can even do an x-ray scan if you're suspecting perforation x-ray could be helpful in um, determining the air under diaphragm but the ct contrast remains the gold standard for diagnosis. We also need, if the patient coming in well, obviously we need to follow A and E, E to E approach, and also do our resuscitation to our patient. So that will be our initial assessment, and based on the presentation, we need to manage our patient. So for example, if it's a diverticulitis, they will need to be an antibiotic and to be dealt with as a sepsis condition. If it's perforation, abscess, and fistula formation, we need to de resuscitate them, start them an antibiotic, and consider surgery as appropriate based on their condition. All right? So this is diverticulitis or diverticular disease. If we go to the stem, so we have a female patient coming with left iliac fossa pain, peritonitis, diagnosed as ruptured or perforated diverticulitis or diverticular disease. She had a procedure called Hartman procedure, and this is when we do some sort of resection, left hemiclectomy, and do a temporary stoma that can be reversed later on. And we define before what is a stoma. So background, so diverticulitis is caused by inflammation of a diverticular. And this happens, so if you have a diverticular in here, this happens mainly due to fecal impaction tip, and it will be as if it's an appendix that has been inflamed. The path, path of physiology of this, of this disease is quite unique, and the way I prefer to classify it, we need to talk about the wall of the um, so we need to talk about the wall of the bowel, and also something called the vasa recta, as you see from here, and also the lumen. So we're talking about the lumen and the blood vessels going to the wall, and also the wall. So in terms of the lumen. Significant increase of intra-abdominal pressure. This can happen due to chronic cough and the chronic constipation or chronic straining or carrying heavy objects or low fiber diet. This can lead to increased intra-abdominal pressure. The unique structure of the wall is quite an important and relevant thing as well. So the wall of the bowel, if I'm gonna take, if this is a bowel and I decided to take a section in here and look from the top, you will find the whole bowel has an, um, you know, the mucosa and the, the muscular is propria and so on. But there is an outer layer on this bowel that's called the muscular longitudinal layer or outer longitudinal layer of muscle that's surrounding the whole bowel from the all directions. But the difference in the, um, the colon or the rectosigmoid region it doesn't look like that at all. So you will have here, this is the uh, bowel wall, and you will have the, mus the, the outer longitudinal layer will be divided into three bands, just like that, which is called tinea coli. So that makes the wall, the wall anatomically weak or physiologically weak, right? Which will predispose everyone to having diverticular disease or diverticulitis and so on. The other thing is, so there is something called the vasa recta. If I'm gonna make this wall a little bit thicker, like that, yeah, if it's a little bit thicker like that, and also we're gonna make the other one a little bit thicker like this as well, all right? So the blood vessels and the nerves will come through the wall and they're moving like this, but, in this layer, you have outer longitudinal layer, 
protecting the outside so it wouldn't make it weak at all. But if you have Vasa Recta coming out from here, so it has nothing on the outside to protect the wall, so it will further make the wall very weak. So the pathophysiology of um, the diverticular disease or diverticulosis is you have unique structure of the muscularis propria, absence of outer longitudinal layer, and its replacement by uh, uh, something called tinea coli, which is three layers that's not as strong as the outer longitudinal layer. The, vas the vasa recta, which are the nerves that pass through the wall and is not protected from the outside. The third thing is increased intraabdominal pressure and due to exaggerated peristaltic movement and also the low fiber diet, spasmodic contraction, and so on and so forth. This question was asked before, and it's how the neutrophils migrate through the wall in acute inflammation. So there is sort of rolling on the endothelial surface and then adhesion by production of the integrase enzyme and then transmigration through the wall and then chemotactic effect and phagocytosis and apoptosis which is a programmed cell death. The lifespan of neutrophils is usually seven days and a few days following the surgery, the patient will lift inferior fossa collection. As we said, there could be a retained hematoma or a diverticular abscess, which is one of the main differentials. For those patients, they will need to be started an antibiotic based on the local guidelines for each hospital. Over commonly, we need to cover gram-positive by amoxicillin, gram-negative by clindamycin and gentamicin, or even any ropes as well, so metronidazole can be added to those patients. We talked about the initial assessment. We need to take history and they examine our patient and send our bloods and do imaging and the CT scan is the gold standard over ultrasound and anything else could be important and the resuscitation is following A to E assessment. Don't forget to follow sepsis sex protocol and the starting your patient with antibiotic and fluid and taking blood gas as well. So if the patient is critically ill, like we said, if the patient is critically ill or shocked, we need to do immediate resuscitation and the critical case support, diagnosis, and antibiotic. And if it is uncomplicated diverticulitis, they might even be treated in our patient or um, purely medically. But if you need to give them IV antibiotic and you feel they are unwell enough, they will need to come in. CT scanning um, can be uh, the following result, whether it's a localized inflammation, diverticulitis, or a perforation, like we said, or an abscess formation, or even adhesion or fistulation leading to bubble free. So these are the diseases spectrum or the complication for acute diverticulitis. And we talked about the initial management as well. And the later management, every patient with diverticular disease will need to be to have a colonoscopy to rule out cancer or bowel obstruction. And if they are very unwell, septic, they will need to have resection, like we say by Hartman procedure. So this is diverticulitis and its disease spectrum and how to approach it. Thank you very much.